fashion, high fashion, a wide and wondrous world of pretty parading girls, an elegant, sophisticated assembly of gowns gorgeously gathered round the sleekest of feminine forms, a celebrated world controlled by men, but revolved by the dressy dreams of women everywhere. And yet today, silver-tongued compares are describing the merits of men's clothes. For not since the glittering days of Beau Brummel have men been such firm followers of fashion. Trends grow up with the urgency of springtime flowers, and even sportsmen clad their practised muscles in the best of British tailoring. Bruce McLaren, Jim Clark, Innes Ireland, racing aces now concerned in blazing a catwalk trail. But what is it that has changed man's scorn for the dandy? How is it that men, once happily swathed in loose hanging flops of pinstripe, can now consider a shaped coat and narrow trousers? Why is it that tough sportsmen should wander from the field of play and, like England forward Bobby Smith and golfing Jimmy Hitchcock, display their London line to fans of fashion? The answer's as long as the arm of Bowling Betzer, but let's begin it away from the catwalk. Let's begin it away from a crowd that admires Tom Graveney, not for his late cut, but the cut of his suit. Let's begin it where men's fashion begins, in Savile Row. It's still the Savile Row of immaculate craftsmanship, of supreme pride in tailoring wool into the finest of men's clothes. Yes, still it's British wool cloth that reflects the artistry of traditional skills. The rare quality of work and cloth has not changed. What has changed, what is different from the past, is Savile Row's exclusiveness. For today, more men can afford the price of donning distinction. More men can afford the cross-legged care, the rich reputation that is stitched into every row of Savile suiting. In consequence, more men are better dressed. But Savile Row can hardly claim even the biggest share of credit for causing millions of modern eyes to wince at the sight of a careless appearance. Too often, in the past, Middle Age Reserve kept it confined to charcoal greys and drab designs. But that too is changing. British Reserve is taking a beating. Colour and cut is on the warpath, a path which began with the post-war demob suit. No suit was better designed to sadden even the bravest heart. The rebellion against such a mess of male attire spread through 15 years. Eventually, it resulted in the Italian style. Italy was the young man's benefactor. It gave him everything, a hairstyle, a suit, even shoes. But before its semi-success was an overreach. Yet who could really blame the teddy boy for searching fashion history? A history that includes such riches of Regency's splendor. Here was a period when man rivaled the rainbow, when wife, compared with husband, was reduced to a repetition of his glory, an age of grace, a time of time for graciousness. time when a gentleman's visit to his tailor was the occasion for his lady to smile her patience and continue round the park. Not since those glittering days of Beau Brummel have men been such firm followers of fashion. But how can the Regency dandy, daddy of clothes consciousness, have affected our modern sober sides? What connection is there between this time and ours? Certainly no present seeker of tailoring perfection can expect a glass of claret. No glass of claret. But that's a minor loss compared with the boost of modern menswear fired by the Prince Regent's enthusiasm for fashion. The new style jackets have squarer shoulders with sharper sleeve heads and slightly bolder lapels. They are fancy waistcoats with deep openings, the cut of the jacket and vest enhancing the slimness of the trousers. Not a Regency tailor's description, but one that describes his client as well as it does our modern dandy. 
Yes, the dandy has returned with a whole new range of colorful wool cloth that has been a due to drabness, that has said goodbye to the browns and blues and greys and encouraged men to buy. But color woven wool has inspired more than the urge to buy. It's inspired a design that is catching on with amazing speed. It has inspired the peacock era, suits of two matching cloths that differ but harmonize excitingly. Even city working businessmen, stalwarts of reserve, are meeting a trend that is predicted to last for many years. So now fashion is a male preserve. The demob suit, new color and design, these have contributed to its present day importance. But for the first time in many years, Britain has a surplus of men, so the male Other reasons for this sudden switch to a man's world of elegance and style include the broader outlook induced by foreign travel, the fact that smokeless zones are encouraging gayer colors, that cloths of lighter weight have meant new shapes, that dry cleaning has given clothes a shorter life. But perhaps all these are subservient to the stars of pop music, who have spread more than anything the cult of dressing differently. Watch, for example, the peacock-suited searchers recording a number that's gone right through the hit parade, who've had success made to men.